Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and today I'm back for Hypixel Skyblock, and today's gonna be an interesting video where I go over the history of Hypixel Skyblock. More specifically, the most game-breaking exploits that you could imagine. As an ex-First Place Frags member, I can tell you that in my day, I've been exposed to hundreds of bugs that are you know they start out being as minor as being able to fly in the hub all the way to getting to the point where you can kick everybody from your dark auction lobby steal all the items and then once you get back duplicate billions of coins worth of items so yeah i've seen a lot now luckily you know the fact that i'm still here with youtube rank and unbanned means that i haven't exploited any of the big ones but i you know i'm guilty of a few of the little ones but so are most people that were playing skyblock at that time anyways real quick before we get into the exploits i'd like to ask a quick favor of you guys if you could hit that subscribe button then it would help me out a ton it costs nothing to you but everything to me and you could always unsubscribe if you end up not liking me but you know i mean you're, you're here now you click the video so chances are you might like me oh maybe I am i okay i don't know <laughs> so the first exploit that i found in my journey is the end shop slash jerry's workshop exploit it this is a really minor bug it turns out with any shop in the game i don't know why it's labeled as end shop slash jerry's workshop because it worked everywhere as far as i remember uh back when the bazaar was implemented they changed the game to make it so instead of buying infinite items from merchants you could only buy 640 but for a short time you could actually get around the limit by just buying one item at a time instead of going into that menu and buying a whole bunch so you could theoretically buy infinite items still it would just take forever in the early days of skyblock there used to be a duplication glitch with bait if you were to place a hopper down underneath some water on your private island and then cast out your fishing rod you might notice even now there's a little bait that shows up in the water a little item that drops but it disappears shortly after back in the day you could actually pick up that item with a hopper so you could theoretically do bait that way when quick crafting was added there was a short time when you could actually make any item in the game without having the collection requirements for that item the most famous example of this is when they dropped the pets update and you could craft almost every pet in the game without even unlocking its collection for example the sheep pet you didn't have to have mutton collection 8 to craft it you just needed to have the materials and then just click into the quick crafting slot this is a really well-known exploit but i might as well mention it it's called the horse in a wall exploit you basically just spawn a horse pet inside a block get on top of it and then there you go you can ride it through walls it it's a fun way to troll people on private islands by getting in places you're not supposed to get and also you know spending 5,000 less coins just to get into the spirit caves oh here's a freaking historical one the piggy bank withdrawal bug prior to december 3rd 2019 the piggy bank was able to interact with the banker remotely the function was originally meant to only be able to deposit coins but after you deposit the coins, the player could actually back out into the main bank menu, which then allowed you to withdraw coins without a cooldown. Uh, that sounds complicated, but basically uh, the piggy bank used to be the personal bank before the personal bank was the thing and you could only deposit but you know through bugs you could withdraw as well the bug was patched and in place of the piggy bank they just dropped the system altogether and then made the personal bank as we know it now speaking of the piggy bank there's an exploit that used to exist where you could have all three versions of a piggy bank talisman which includes the intact one the cracked one and the broken one if you were to have all three the reforges would actually stack now obviously that doesn't work anymore uh oh this also used to work for varying rarities of the same line of talismans like healing talisman and healing ring feather talisman feather artifact you know that sort of thing but of course all patched now and speaking of reforges for a very short time there was an exploit that allowed you to reforge a dungeon chest key now apparently this is extremely rare this reforged dungeon chest key item it's technically a talisman uh even though it doesn't say so but yeah only a couple of them exist because they patched the bug 
almost immediately after they found out, which is before the public even knew about it. And when I did my talismans video, I didn't even know about this. Oh boy, here we go. Talking about the slime hat exploit. Anyone that's been around will remember this one. The slime hat is an item that negates knockback when you wear it. But of course, there's a problem with that. Its stats are garbage. So you have to sacrifice your head slot in order to achieve anti-knockback. Well, there was an exploit back in the day that goes something like this. You'd wear the slime hat on your head and then you take the item out of the head slot while replacing it with another head item. For example, a piggy bank or a power orb. All in one click, you pick up the power orb or the piggy bank and swap it with the slime hat in the head slot. And then you would switch back to any normal helmet in the same way. And what that would do is give you anti-knockback without the limitations of the crappy stats of the slime hat. Uh, although this version of the bug has been patched, it took three attempts to do so. And each time there's been some really buggy behavior because of it so let's get into the most famous one we all know where this is going the pickle dupe aka the backpack duplication exploit some weird things could be put on the player's head due to the slime hat glitch being patched and this actually included farmer boots which means that you could have farmer boots on your feet and on your head for double farmer boot speed and something that's really weird is that if you have farmer boots on your head and then you were to go in third person, it would look like you're wearing an orange helmet. Minecraft works in mysterious ways. <laughs> but anyways, that fix to the slime hat glitch also led to you being able to put more than just farmer boots. You could put anvils on your head. You could put crafting tables. You could put glass and most famously backpacks. So the way this worked is that if you were to have an empty head slot, we all know that right clicking on a helmet will automatically equip it, right? Well, technically, since every block was a helmet, you could have a backpack in your hand. And if you right clicked on it to open it, it would open the backpack while simultaneously putting it on your head. What this does is it confuses Minecraft because what happens is in, when you right click on a backpack then the game's like oh you're opening a backpack okay it shows the inventory of the backpack but then what you did is you removed it from the slot that the game thinks it's in so then once you manipulate the inventory take some items out and then exit the inventory the game still thinks the backpack is in your hand so it will try to save that new inventory to your hand which doesn't have a backpack so nothing happens meanwhile the backpack is on your head and obviously the inventory hasn't been updated because its slot changed unexpectedly so that's why the backpack dupe happened from a plugin developer's point of view i've had the same problem happen with a plugin i made called uh shulker box backpacks where people were able to use the number keys to be able to swap out items between different slots while they're in the inventory and break it but obviously that's been patched in my plugin as well. But yeah, there's some insight if you're curious. This next one is pretty famous for uh, first place frags and that's the private island bed exploit. Basically the way it works is it allowed players to farm thousands of candy during spooky festivals by setting the island biome to hell with the, you know, the biome stick, Jerry, uh, filling a chest with candy and then right clicking on a placed bed which obviously since it's a nether biome would explode and it would blow up the chest and then if you were to pick up the candy that drops from the chest it would actually count towards candy collection during spooky yikes for a short time this also worked with farming drops so again you could fill an entire double chest with farming drops blow up a bed pick up the farming equipment and then just get farming 50 just like that so yeah that's a yikes <laughs> another early skyblock hopper glitch is that in the early game items such as fairy souls baits coins on the ground skeleton hat bones could be picked up with hoppers uh, these items are now unobtainable obviously since it's been patched and those that have used the glitch before still have the items today but they are extremely rare obviously because you know this is from like the first we're talking first weeks of skyblock you could pick up anything with a hopper because there were no special tags uh, so yeah it's very strange now we're getting into some of the more recent exploits the unstable dragon armor afk exploit which basically allowed you to kill mobs without being there 
on your private island. Many players used to do this to automate killing magma cubes for coins. Uh, back in the day, magma cube farms used to be pretty good for coins. You know, they would just uh, die to either cactus or in this case, unstable dragon armor. And then their drops will fall into hoppers, into chests, and then you could sell all those to the NPC. Bazaar didn't exist yet. So yeah, just the NPC for a uh, large sum of coins. I remember back in the day, people used to also use some weird armor swap exploit to level up tarantula and rev armor. I don't remember how they did it. Maybe it was with a different item but uh yeah afking on private islands to kill mobs is something that has a lot of exploits around it but yeah also for a short time you could kill other players mobs like you could visit someone else's island and kill the mobs on their island with unstable it's interesting uh, but speaking of afk methods the vampire mask uh, again this exploit allowed players to harvest combat xp on their private island using teleport pads to change the player's direction, bypassing the anti-macro system that checks for head movement before awarding XP, which is actually not even relevant anymore. That system doesn't exist anymore. But back then, that's how Hypixel dealt with macroing. The user could then equip a vampire mask near combat mobs by killing them using the mask's effect. This no longer works, obviously, and you can't even use the effect on private islands. You can't get combat XP on islands. I think this is how people leveled up their rev armor. Now that I think about it, it makes sense. You just have the vamp mask and then three fourths rev armor back when that was relevant. And you could also level up tarantula. Uh, obviously not the helmet but the other three pieces you could level this way now here's one that i was directly involved with and that's the pufferfish hat afk chicken farm exploit so the way it works is that you would build a chicken farm with minions have the chickens fall into a little pit of water and then you would you would combine a pufferfish hat with a fishing rod and then what would happen is every few seconds the fishing rod that's floating around in the water would damage tick everything around it and kill all of the uh, chickens and it would then drop their stuff into hoppers into chests and then you could collect it but yeah uh, i was the one who designed this farm so that's a thing but obviously that method was patched but it did inspire another exploit which is famous in time dio's video where he got combat 50 using cactus armor and by farming ghasts so in the same way as the pufferfish hat you could comp you could afk combat xp on your private island but this time with gas minions this was patched but eventually was found to also work with thorns on armor so you could have superior dragon armor with thorns on it but then eventually was patched all together when the admins finally disabled combat xp on private islands but yeah there's been a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of combat xp methods afk it's kind of crazy oh this one was fun uh back when the blue whale pet was added to the game in the oringo update on february 26th 2020 the first traveling zoo event took place the blue whale pets bulk ability gave one defense per every 0.3 health that you had players wearing massive armor could effectively become invincible by having more than 90,000 defense which is equal to about 99.9% .9 damage reduction with 20,000 HP they would have about 18 million effective health so yeah you could basically become unstoppable this was fun because back in the day the Colosseum was still a thing so you could actually walk into the Colosseum equip a blue whale pet I think it only worked for rare instead of the higher rarities for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, you would literally be unkillable. There's no way to kill you. Also, fun fact, that same day, the first Oringo event also spawned a whole bunch of Oringo stands on private islands instead of where it's supposed to be, which is in hubs, which led to another exploit on this list. But we're going to get into that in a second. Next up is the session ID exploit. For five days in mid-February 2020 to early March 2020, an exploit was discovered that allowed players to use session IDs to log on to other people's accounts. This was exploited and players like Ice Blades, Time Dio, and even my friend Fezzi, all, but way earlier, but you know, uh, this is when the, okay, so I should probably specify this exploit has been a thing for a very long time and it only became public 
during those five days. But yeah, so whoever hacked Fezzi used the same method, but way earlier. Anyways, yeah, these alts were hacked and millions and millions of coins were either voided by trolls or traded away by IRL traders. This exploit wasn't unique to Hypixel. This was actually a Minecraft wide problem that people on 2B2T also experienced. The way it worked is that it used Minecraft's legacy session ID processing system. Whenever a player joined a server, their unique session ID would be generated, and that's what's sent to Mojang to validate their connection. Each player receives a unique session ID. By using the old aka legacy session ID system, hackers could use any valid session ID to log in as any user. For example, a player can log in with the session ID, I don't know, 30 virus, and then they could just replace the name 30 virus with any other name, for example, Notch. And then there you go. You have a valid session ID and you're requesting to log in as Notch and it lets you in because it was using legacy code that for some reason was still supported even though it was outdated. But yeah, that's a yikes. Uh, thankfully, no staff on Hypixel were affected due to two-factor authentication. However, uh, popular streamers and YouTubers were majorly affected by the exploit. Luckily, not me. But yeah, that was a, a scary situation. Lobby crashes, uh, boy. Uh, Hypixel has encountered massive problems regarding performance. Occasionally, lobbies will crash, causing rollbacks. When a lobby crashes, the player's inventory, purse, and ender chest get rolled back to before when the player joined the lobby or if they've been there a while, several minutes before. Some features that are not rolled back include the bank and auction house since they're stored on an API level instead of you know, on that particular server, as well as Slayers and Pet XP. So if a lobby were to unexpectedly crash, then you might lose several minutes of progress, but only selectively. Only what's in, you know, like I said, the purse, ender chest, and uh, inventory will get rolled back. So this could be a big problem because let's say you were to have 10 million coins on you, and then you somehow willingly crash the server just after depositing those 10 million coins into the bank, which again is stored somewhere else. So then your lobby crashes, you reboot into a new lobby and you still have your 10 million coins. This is how um, by accident, Refraction duplicated a scythe blade. But of course he didn't intentionally crash the lobby, but this is just an example of what happened. He put in, I think he put a scythe blade on the auction house and then his lobby crashed and then he ended up having the one in the auction house and the one in his inventory when he came back. So yeah, lobby crashes are extremely dangerous. One of the most infamous ways to crash players was using the banner. This was showcased in another one of Time Dio's videos. The way it worked is that when a player in 1.8 saw any banner in an inventory menu or as a dropped item, their game would crash. When the banners held in the hand of someone else, players around them would see very strange graphical glitches. No other item in Skyblock or even the whole of Minecraft is known to manipulate the player's screen so severely. Honestly, I'd really I'd suggest looking up videos about the banner in Skyblock. It's really interesting. Another well-known way to crash lobbies was with the slime test command, which I go by lots of names made a video about this one. Basically what happened is slime test is an old command from like five years ago that the admins just kind of left in as like a server-wide command, not even Skyblock specifically, but apparently players had access to this command and someone must have found it by going through the entire command list and testing every command. But anyway, it turns out you could spawn slimes in Skyblock. Now this is a, a yikes because spawning too many slimes or too big of a slime would crash the lobby and this opened the door to someone being able to selectively crash lobbies again they could deposit coins into the bank from their purse crash the lobby and then reboot to have more coins in their purse turns out almost every person that did this in the few hours that the bug was well known and widespread they got temp banned for this and wiped so Ooh, that's why you don't mess around with any weird unexpected things that people tell you about in skyblock especially because the admins they can't tell whether or not you're doing it for fun or for an exploit but yeah that was a mess i remember something that first place frags used to also do is they would uh crash lobbies in order to get free dark auction items i by you know one of these memes memes by one of these means not uh slime test but like i think banners i'm not necessarily sure but i do remember that it used to be a commonplace thing 
to just crash all the players in a dark auction lobby except yourself and then just get all the items at the minimum price yikes whoa hey it's editor frog here to interrupt the end of the video so uh basically uh this video is going to be 40 minutes long if we don't do what we're about to do and that's cut the video into two parts this was part one this is the ending if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like i know it's a little abrupt but whatever dude check the pinned comment and all that because 30 probably put something there that's important uh yeah thanks for watching bye